So, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you for joining me for another first ride review. And this is a bike that lots of you have asked for. The 2021 Suzuki SV650. I don't want to get run over, so let's just hop on it and go for a ride and talk about this bike. Start her up. LCD dash there. No TFT. And actually, I think it looks pretty good. Right, one touch start. It's pretty cool. That's a nifty little system, actually. So I have to say a massive thank you to Suzuki UK for supporting the channel and letting me get out on their press bikes. I've got this for two weeks. So this is my first ride experience on the, uh, the new SV. But just a little kind of history with me and the SV. So I bought one in 2006. And it was actually the second generation SV, which we called the pointy version because it was very pointy at the previous generation, which was from 1999 and was called the curvy. So powering this bike is a 645cc 90 degree V-twin and that makes 72 horsepower at 8,500 RPM and 64 Newton meters of torque at 6,800 RPM. So in terms of power it's uh, pretty much one of the uh, main competitors in the naked middleweight category. <laughs> Whee! So let's talk suspension. We've got 41 millimeter telescopic forks up front. And those have 125 mil travel. And at the rear we have a link type monoshock and that's got 63 millimeters of stroke and it has seven stage preload adjustment, but the front forks are not adjustable at all. <laughs> Braking wise, four pot Tokiko axial mounted calipers, and those are on 90, sorry, 290 millimeter discs. And at the rear, we have a single piston caliper with 240 millimeter disc. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> so, quickly talk about electronics. And this doesn't have too much in the way of electronics. It has ABS. And uh, you can't adjust that. And you also have the low RPM assist. So that as you let the cotch out, it actually actuates the throttle a little bit just to make it super easy for new riders to take off and uh, also to uh, help avoid stalls. So they are really thinking of the new rider here, which is good because this middleweight naked category is a great first stepping stone in your motorcycling career. Quite a bit dark all of a sudden. <laughs> uh, what else has it got electronics wise? It's got the one touch start system and uh, that basically just starts the starter motor <laughs> funnily enough and it's got like a pre-timed uh, interval and then as soon as it knows the engine's turning over it uh, cuts the starter motor. So you just have to tap it once and it starts the bike up as you saw earlier. So a nice little feature, but that's it. No, no other electronics, no riding modes, no, nothing else fancy. So it's a very simple motorcycle. Simple does not always mean bad though. And one thing I will say about tech specs is the spec sheet only tells part of the story. And I know so many people get hung up on, oh, you know, this bike's got two horsepower more. Or it's, you know, it weighs two kilos more than this. Now that I've mentioned weight, this weighs 200 kilograms, so not the lightest in the category, but also not the heaviest. The heaviest being the CB650R. This has the uh, trellis frame, which looks fantastic, I think. Just trying to avoid that gravel in the middle of the road there. It does mean I'm getting pinged by bushes. Right, so the end of the road here, but it does mean we can sort of hop off and just give you a quick a quick walk around. 
getting the uh, side stand down is nice and easy and getting it into neutral is nice and easy but uh, yeah I think this is a really nice looking bike I love this sort of candy red colour so there's your Tokiko four pot calipers these are upgraded in 2019 before that it had two piston calipers and the brakes weren't great uh, we'll get into the performance in a bit 17 inch wheels we have a 120 front and a 160 at the back not a 180 it is a bit thinner so cheaper tyres these are Dunlop Road Smart 3s and from my brief ride they seem pretty good 14 and a half litres fuel tank uh, Suzuki claims 68 miles to the gallon there or thereabouts which is nice here isn't it very lovely we have a classic headlight and that's a bulb headlight bulb indicators so the bulbs all round forks 41 millimeter 125 mil travel as you can see no adjusters at the tops I don't know if you can see that but rubber hose brakes there's the uh, 90 degree V twin twin spark so that means it's got two uh, two spark plugs per cylinder and that just allows for a much smoother power delivery lower emissions lower fuel better fuel economy I should say massive exhaust on this it doesn't sound too bad of course you'd have to get an aftermarket pipe you could get a slip on for this as well Hillian foot pegs that looks pretty comfy for them in terms of knee angle the seat is quite minimal padding to be honest it's quite hard so this is one of the, no this is the narrowest bike in the category 760 millimeters wide I quite like these rear lights it looks quite smart some really nice colour options, you've got this one, you've got the blue and there's a black and gold option, although I do think Suzuki missed a trick and they should have had gold wheels it's got the gold trellis frame but they've gone with black wheels they should have gone with gold gold wheels would have made it look a bit JPS right so, not touching the throttle but you see when I let the clutch out the revs go up so that's the low RPM assist it just makes it very easy to ride low down so throttle response let's see how slow we can get it so I'm not on the throttle at all and it's just putting along at 7 miles an hour so that's pretty good makes slow stuff nice and easy of course you can stall it if you were to jump on the brakes we're just adding a bit of throttle there lovely and smooth the LCD dash I know some of you are going to go, oh, it's not TFT. My God, the world's coming to an end. But I don't mind an LCD dash. As long as it's got everything you need, which this one does, I don't mind it. There's nothing worse than an overly fussy dash, be it TFT or LCD. If it's got too much stuff all over it, it's just useless. Let's talk about some ergonomics, shall we? The first thing I noticed when jumping on this bike was just how small it feels. I don't know whether I've been just riding some bigger bikes lately, but it feels so tiny. So it's got a 785 millimeter seat height or 30.9 inches. And uh, my inseam is around about 29, 30 inches. So I'll just stop here. There's nothing coming. So yeah, so if you look at the seat height, I mean, I can totally flat foot this. If you can see over my jacket which is lovely and for those shorter riders that's a really really great thing because when you can flat foot it especially if you're doing kind of slow speed stuff it's good to know that when you come to the stop you can put both feet down just adds to your confidence levels <laughs> you do get quite a nice rasp from the airbox up front <laughs> Woo. Ooh. rear wheel to spin up a bit yeah so there's no traction control there's no riding modes so it is a fairly basic bike in terms of electronics ABS is all you get and those other two little systems I've already mentioned so let's talk about suspension now this road is really really bumpy and my last ride on an SV a proper ride was my 2006 SV the SV 650S and that was ever so soft and squidgy and I have to say the suspension on this is quite firm actually but it also is really good at damping out all this all this nastiness so I'm rather impressed with the suspension it just makes uh, makes the back roads a lot more fun let's 
talking about that engine. 72 horsepower of speed and power. <laughs> yeah, you know, the uh, engine sort of... Accidentalhorn.com Don't Google that. It doesn't... It's not like the MT-07 which has got, you know, a load of punch low down and you can power wheelie that thing in first and second gear quite easily. Um, it kind of just propels you forward in a very linear fashion with no drama whatsoever. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, so there's nothing really groundbreaking about this engine because it's been out for so long. You know, it's effectively unchanged since 1999 other than the twin spark stuff. <laughs> but it is a fun little unit. As I said, not the most fun, but like the MT-07 has a bit more poke low down as does the Trident. And you've got the CB650R which has a lot more up top. But you know, it's not slow. One thing I have noticed with this bike is it does propel you in a very gentle fashion forwards. But when you look down at the speed, you're like, oh, okay, we are, we are going pretty quickly. So it is a little deceptive. Talk about the brakes in a minute. Those brakes are pretty good. ABS kicks in quite early though. Yeah, I can feel the... I can feel the ABS kicking quite early, that's the only downside, I can feel it pulsing through the lever. But, other than that, slight annoyance, the uh, brakes have a nice amount of power. Back brake's not too bad. Oh, laser white vans, that's not what we want, is it? Oh, I know where we are. Let's go back to the ergonomics. So, yeah, as I said, it's, it feels so small and the seat is quite hard. I mean, my bum is already aching a little bit. I hate white vans. Um, so on a longer journey, I would probably suffer with my bottom and my knees, but I'm sure, actually, there is a few options, even OEM, you can get like the rolled seat, the quilted seat, I mean. That might well be a bit comfier for you. And there are plenty of other options so from third parties as well. So if it does upset your body, there are options. Fuel economy, as I said, 68 miles to the gallon is what they claim. This is my first ride, so I can't really say much about it other than we will see. Cater room coming up, very nice. Was that a later seven actually, I think. So how does this bike stack up against the competition? I mean, the middleweight naked category is super fierce right now. You've got the new Trident, which has really thrown a cat amongst the pigeons with its riding modes, its excellent brakes, and I'm going to say it, class-leading agility. It really is the sharpest handling bike in the category. But this little SV, don't discount it, because actually it is a lot more than the spec sheet will have you believe. It is a very, very capable little bike. I say little, for some people this will be their first big bike, so I don't mean to sound condescending, it's just, you know, I've been riding a lot, lot of big bikes lately. We can do one at least. There you go, plenty of oomph to get past things. Should you need to from that little 645cc lump. We are the meat in a white van sandwich. Never thought I'd say those words. Front. Whee! But you know, if you want to. You can ride this thing like a hooligan. As I said, it's not going to set your knickers on fire. But it's... So far, it's one of these bikes that actually, the harder you ride it, the more... the more rewarding it is. <laughs> Whee! Ooh, croaky. Bit of a big bump there. Oh, so, price is uh, six... 6499 I believe. Now the last time I looked at this about four years ago, or a few years ago anyway, they were they were under six thousand pounds, so they were five seven something or other. And I think probably that was 
does feel good over on the side of the tyre. I think six grand would have been a better price because if I'm honest I think this does need a little update just to bring it in line with the other the other bikes in the sector. Nothing major though. I don't I don't think they need to rework the whole thing, keep the frame, keep the tank, keep the overall aesthetic, just maybe add an LED front light, indicators. I mean, even the screen I think is fine, to be honest with you. Maybe maybe touch the looks a bit, sharpen it up here and there. Maybe some upside down forks, but with the same amount of firmness and stiffness. Brakes do not touch the brakes, they are fantastic. They really are good. Um, again, I don't think the engine needs to be fettled with. It's Perhaps you could try and get a bit more poke out of it low down. Tiny bit more. Um, torque lower down just to make it a bit more exciting but there is you know I'm hoping they don't do a GS there is rumors that there's a new SV650 coming or something to replace it and I'm hoping they don't do a GSXS number on it and give it a completely new look because this that's rather lovely isn't it um, this I think this classic look is really understated and I really like it so Suzuki please Please don't change the look too much because this is a fantastic looking bike as is. Just a few little updates, a few little tweaks, and you've got yourself an absolute winner. I am actually stuck in a bit of a traffic jam at the moment, so now is a good opportunity to talk about heat management. It's 20, it's 20 odd degrees, 28 degrees I think today. I feel no heat blowing out on me anywhere. My legs are not getting cooked. I'm very, very comfortable. Seat is a bit hard, but uh, yeah. Uh, let's talk about the gearbox. The gearbox is pretty good, actually. No real issues. It's not the slickest gearbox, but it works. It's functional. Clutch is okay. It's not a slipper clutch. It's very standard. Uh, you get a span adjustable brake lever, but not a clutch lever. You can just adjust the biting point on that. Um, riding position generally, it's just one of those upright bikes, you know, sit up and beg style. My top half is very upright. The bars feel fairly narrow actually. Like I said, it's the narrowest bike in the category at 760 millimeters. Ground clearance, it's got five, I think it's 5.3 inches of ground clearance for those that need to know about such things. Uh, weight, if I haven't mentioned it, the weight is 200 kilograms ready to ride or 441 pounds. I'm going to touch on price again. So it's 6,500 pounds. So, you know, it is, it is kind of par for the course for the category. Um, but one thing to consider is that you get a three year warranty with this bike. And I think all the others are a two year warranty only. So that's, um, that's something to consider. Certainly. So all in all, the 2021 Suzuki SV650, what do I think? This is a really good bike. So if you're looking for a first big bike, this would be absolutely perfect for you. As I said, there is a lot of other stuff in the market, in the sector, but don't just look at the spec sheet. I always say the spec sheet only tells a part of the story. And while it may not set your knickers alight, with excitement, you might not want that from your first big bike. And it's got great suspension, really good brakes. I love the look of it. That engine is, you know, like I said, while it's not the most exciting, it's very, very reliable, very dependable. And it is still fun. You know, you get to wring the neck of this bike. And I think that's, that's where some of the fun is to be had. You can kind of bring this a lot closer to the edge of the performance. It is a good looking bike. I've been swarmed by the Harley mob. Yeah, I'll be on my big Harley soon. Then we'll see. <laughs> I need to get an open face helmet, don't I? And loads more tattoos. I love you mum on my, <laughs> on my bottom or something. <laughs> oh dear. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you do go out today, do ride safety, but remember to have fun, of course. 
Until next time, peace. off in the next kind of half an hour just to stretch my cheeks <laughs> that sounds so wrong <laughs> oh no <laughs> let's do that again